The laboratory Bunsen burner is a common piece of equipment used for supplying heat in the chemistry laboratory. A conventional Bunsen burner has four main parts. You have the gas inlet, which is where the gas comes in from the main supply into the burner itself. You have on the other side a knob that can be twisted, that's the needle valve, that controls how much gas is allowed through. You have the air vents, which have a movable collar so that you can control the amount of oxygen that gets mixed in with the gas. And then you have the barrel, and this is where the oxygen and the gas fuel mix before they are ignited when the mixture comes out the top of the barrel. So before you light a Bunsen burner, you should always set your air vents and your needle valve. The air vents should be closed totally. And your needle valve, you start by closing it fully. And so if you look at the knob, remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you turn it clockwise, you'll tighten it finger tight till it's closed, and then you back it open. So turn it counterclockwise. About two half twists. When assembling the Bunsen burner for use in the lab, there are several things that you need to pay attention to before you light the burner. First off, the main gas valve from the fuel supply. Coming out of the desk, you have your gas jet, and the handle should be in a perpendicular position to the gas jet itself. That is the off position. And it doesn't matter which side the handle is perpendicular on, if it's this side or this side, uh, both of those are the off position. When you turn the handle so that it is parallel to the gas jet, then you'll hear the gas flowing, and that is the on position. When you go to hook up your Bunsen burner, you need to take one end of your Bunsen burner tubing and hook it to the gas inlet on the Bunsen burner. The other end of the gas tubing needs to be connected to the gas jet. And then you want to make sure that your Bunsen burner is sitting flat. All right? If it is, if the, depending on how you have the uh, Bunsen burner tubing hooked up, it might be partially sitting on an angle and that's not safe so all you simply need to do is turn the hose where it's connected to the inlet so that it does indeed sit flat. Before you ignite the Bunsen burner remember that we close the air vents totally and we close the needle valve completely finger tight and then two half twists open. When you're ready to ignite the Bunsen burner it's a two-handed operation. Only one person should be operating the Bunsen burner at a time. In one hand, you hold the striker, which is a simple flint and steel device. You squeeze it, and spark is produced. Your other hand goes on the gas jet supply handle itself. When you're ready to ignite the Bunsen burner, first make sure that everything flammable is out of the vicinity, that hair and clothing are tied back or, or rolled up so that they're not going to dangle into where the Bunsen burner flame itself is going to be. You turn on the main gas so that the handle is parallel to the gas jet and you listen for the gas to be coming through. Hold the striker above the barrel and squeeze until the flame ignites. Now at first your flame might be pretty tall, all right, taller than we really need it to be. So at that point you close the needle valve slowly to bring the height of the flame to a couple of inches, two or three inches. All right, And the sound of the gas coming through may subside a bit. This is what we call lazy blue flame uh, because it is a blue flame, and the blue obviously talking about the temperature, but also the lazy part talking about how you can see it's pulsating. Um, if we add more oxygen to the mix by opening the air vents, then that fuel is going to burn a little hotter uh, and much more vigorously. and it's what we call a roaring blue flame and if you listen carefully you might be able to hear um, why we call it that because as it burns that much better you get that roaring sound to it. So we're going to open the air vents to make a roaring blue flame. So the air vents are now open and there's a small roar because there's not a lot of gas coming through. If I open the needle valve a little more you'll be able to hear it a little bit better may perhaps even see it a little bit better. 
and this is the hottest flame that we get with the Bunsen burner. The hottest part of that flame is not at the base as you might expect. That's actually the coolest part of the flame where the gas is just emerging from the barrel. The hottest part is right above the tip of that inside light blue cone. When you're finished with the Bunsen burner, just turn it off at the main gas valve. You don't need to close the air vents, close the needle valve. Just cut the main gas supply off at the desk. The flame will go out and then you can let the Bunsen burner cool down before putting it away. In terms of what's safe to touch, the base, the needle valve, the air vents, and even the barrel itself. The barrel doesn't get too hot. If you leave it on a long time, then yes, it will get warm. Um, but remember, the combustion isn't taking place until after the gas leaves the barrel. So where the gas is mixing down here really should not be getting uh, all that hot that it's going to burn you. Uh, but again, use caution if you're using the Bunsen burner for extended periods of time.